It's time again for Tim's Vital Confessions. I'm Tim Durling, and excited about this episode. Thank you for tuning in for this one. Uh, this is a collection that's still very much underway, and I'm still excited about learning more and listening more and hearing more, because there's a lot of music to take in. A band that um, has been on my peripheral for a long, long time, mostly because one of my all-time favorite bands cites him as a huge influence. The band I'm talking about is Yes. And, of course, anybody that knows this show knows what a big... Rush fan I am, and all three members of Rush have always cited various members and various Yes recordings as influences on their sound, and as I listen to especially their classic period, I hear it. They really were the proto-Rush, so it's a natural progression for me to, to get into Yes, and I always did like some of their songs anyway. Granted, they've had different sounds over the years, which is again one of the things I like about getting into a band uh, like Kansas, for example, another band that was influenced by Yes. They had more commercial periods, they had really heavy prog periods, um, simpler songs, and unlike Rush, uh, both Kansas and Yes, especially Yes, all kinds of lineup changes. I mean, with Yes, we're almost approaching Deep Purple White Snake levels. But um, I, if I'm smiling, it's because my Yes collection kind of started off uh, as a punchline, and uh, they didn't even realize it. Jack and Marley, my wonderful children, uh, they've been on here before. They love watching uh, something called Vines. And I, if you've got younger kids, you know what Vines are. They're these short little silly clips. Um, of course, it used to be a website, Vine.com. There isn't any more, but they show up on YouTube. But there's a series of them that have a potentially dangerous situation about to happen, and they freeze. And they do that using the intro to Roundabout by Yes. Acoustic intro into the drums and bass line, and then it stops. And I said to them once, you guys realize that's a song, right? That's, that's, that's an actual song. Anyway, so it kind of went from there. So my birthday last year was a very nice surprise when I got this from the kids. Uh, so I'm missing the first two or three Yes albums, and like I said, I'm still working on it. So this is Fragile by Yes from 1971. And so this is a 2003 reissue from Rhino, which originally issued on Atlantic Records. Roger Dean is the guy that did the majority of Yes's artwork. Like Hugh Simon, has a very unique style, and I'm pretty sure that's a Roger Dean color there. So this deluxe edition looks like this. Slipcase, so, so there's the front cover of the CD itself, the digipack, and back cover of that. So we've got band photos here. The CD is made up to look like a classic Atlantic red-green um, album logo. Some credits. And a booklet. And this album was a, a really successful album. It contains the song Roundabout, which was a top 20 hit for them. And it's edited version, of course. It's really long on their, their album, but they, they edited it down to about three minutes. So various photos of the group, in some cases with family here, and uh, thank yous from everyone. Uh, lyrics to all the songs, and of course this being a reissue version, there is a write-up about it too. And the other thing that's exciting about getting into this band is that I always kind of uh, admired their artwork from afar. It was that they had really cool spacey artwork. So here's just the Fragile on record. So much more detail. If you can't tell what that says, Fragile, yes. And this is a Canadian edition on Atlantic. A little beat up, but serviceable. There's that back cover again. It's similar to what was inside the CD, just bigger, of course, which is uh, kind of the point of me collecting the vinyl. I don't know if there's anything else it came with originally. This is the record itself. The plastic sleeve with, like the CD, the red-green Atlantic logo. So the follow-up to Fragile came out in 1972, generally considered one of their finest albums, and I've heard it called one of the best progressive rock albums ever, Close to the Edge, and because I like to do this sort of thing, I'm going to start off with my 8-track version of Close to the Edge. Not a lot to this cover, but uh, classic Yes logo, even written that way down here. This is a U.S. edition of the 8-track version. This pretty pink cart. Um, also have this in a, a pretty old cassette tape. This is an old Canadian cassette of Close to the Edge. 
I'm not sure if this is an original issue or not. It probably isn't. If it was an original issue, it probably would have come in a slipcase, but it's probably from the, at some point in the 70s, if it was a reissue, the sticker on there. And, of course, their albums have been remastered several times. I've got an old Canadian CD version of Close to the Edge. Of course, on Atlantic. usual look of the Atlantic CDs that were issued in the 80s. Band photos there. And not a lot inside of it for credits. So, um, you weren't a rock band in the 70s pretty much. You weren't a rock if you didn't put out a live album, preferably a double. And in 1973, Yes did just that with some beautiful artwork here on this. Yes songs, all one word classic Roger Dean artwork there. And this is a remastered edition from uh, 2004 when Atlantic remastered a lot of their uh, band's catalogs. You've heard me talk about that with countless other bands like uh, Led Zeppelin, Foreigner, Bad Company. So two disc set. Probably would have originally come in one of the, uh, the big CD cases. They've got the artwork right here on the disc themselves. This would look cool on vinyl, as of yet don't have it on vinyl, but, you know, there'll be follow-ups. You know, hopefully I get a complete vinyl, complete CD, whatever. But uh, for now, band photos. You know, the more artistically inclined rock fans, I'm sure they were doodling this on their, you know, their notebooks in, in, in school, while they were supposed to be paying attention to algebra or something like that. Look at this. It's really cool stuff. Don't have this one in vinyl, like I said, at all. I'm sure this all appears there, too. Any one of these designs could have been an album cover on their own. And, um, a little bit of credits. And a big gap, uh, for me. A big gap. Because I'm missing everything else that came out in the 70s. So, work in progress. So, in 1980, um, singer John Anderson left for the first time, would not be the last time, and uh, so did uh, Rick Wakeman, keyboard player. They've had the Tony Kay and uh, Patrick Morass, they had different keyboard players, but, um, so 1980, they put out what I think is a really underrated, overlooked album, and one of the favorites that I've heard so far, even though for Yes fans, it would be like, I'm trying to think of an equivalent, it, it would be like for... Um, uh, a Kiss fan favoring something in the non-makeup years. I, I don't know. I can't really think of a comparison, but hardcore Yes fans, there were some that did not like this album because John Anderson wasn't there. So, they got a guy named Trevor Horn. Now, Trevor Horn not only stepped in for vocals, but Trevor Horn went on to become a huge, huge pop producer in the U out of the UK. Uh, and, and way, way, way beyond... Prog rock or rock in general. I mean, when 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 you hear "Relax" by Frankie Goes to Hollywood, that's that's Trevor Horn, an Art of Noise. Um, you know, very successful producer, continuing to this day. Even though I'll get to it a little bit later, he is once again a member of Yes. So the first, uh, the the only album to come out with this lineup came out in 1980. is called Drama, and again, more cool artwork. And I really like this album. It's actually kind of heavy for Yes. It's more electric guitar based than acoustic. Uh, it's a Canadian version, but I can tell by the, the maple leaf there. Very little written on it, just the address down at the bottom. Um, if you're a huge Rush fan, if you're into uh, if you're into Dream Theater, um, but you've never really gotten into Yes, and don't think that you're a Yes fan if you've only heard a couple songs, I would, you know, go to YouTube, type in Yes Drama and see what comes up. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. So this is the band as it was in 1980. Um, a little bit of credits. Lyrics. There's only six songs on here. One of my favorite Yes songs, Tempest Fugit, closes out this album. Typical Red Green Atlantic logo here. And I have this on CD. The expanded CD to this is, features about twice the amount of songs. This is an old 
Canadian CD with the Warner Brothers special price on here. Kind of rare. You don't see these issues of CDs that much anymore. This is on Atlantic. This is the disc itself. And back cover. I guess it's, it's a continuous, it's a gatefold. And some credits in there. Interesting. You know, it's always interesting. This, some bands have pretty much the same credits everywhere, but what else? But sometimes they get really specific. Steve Howe outlines the guitars he used on each of the tracks on here, which if you're a gearhead, it would be really, really interesting. So yes, went on hiatus at this point after this album's tour. So in 1981, uh, Atlantic put out this compilation, which you've probably seen many times. It's worth picking up cheap. It's usually $5.99. Uh, I got it at Sunrise for $5.99. Classic Yes. 1981. Awesome artwork again by Roger Dean. This is a remastered version. This is kind of a stopgap. Artwork on the disc itself, which is very cool. Back cover. And just... Just really cool, really cool artwork. And uh, the track listings, the years of each of the songs, and just your, your basic mastering credits and things like that. So I know enough about the Yes story to know that, that something kind of strange happened um, in these years. So 1982, uh, Steve Howe and Jeff Downs had left the current Yes lineup and with Carl Palmer and John Wetton formed Asia, who you've probably heard of. But uh, where did that leave the rest of the, some of the rest of the members? Well, uh, John Anderson, Chris Squire, Chris Squire, the sadly deceased uh, bassist of Yes, and the only guy that's appeared in every one of the recordings thus far. He passed away a few years ago, uh, two or three years ago, sadly prior to their induction to the Rock and Hall of Fame. They were talking again, Anderson and Squire, and at the same time uh, they were working with this guitar player named Trevor Raven. Alan White, drummer, and um, Tony Kay, the, one of their previous keyboard players, were going to form a band called Cinema. And, and chances are Atlantic Records said, well, four or five members here played in Yes. Why don't you call it Yes? There's, you know, I understand that, Mark, do you understand? I understand completely the marketing behind something like that. There's, there's value in that brand name, and people are a lot more likely to recognize it, even though it was a very, very different band. So out of nowhere, this huge album comes out in 1983. 90125. What is that? Some sort of a strange code or anything? No. I'll show I'll tell you what 90125 is. Let's uh let's see. This is a Canadian version we've got here. Let's find There it is. 90125 was very simply the Atco Atlantic Records serial number. The title changed two or three times as the schedule kept getting put back. I guess it was going to be 90124. It's going to be something totally different. But 90125 has a ring to it. Um, being in radio, I don't know how many times I've, bu I've back sold something off this album and almost said 90210, but that's another story. So this is the back cover of 90125, marking it as a Canadian version. And what was it about this album that became such a big hit? Oh, I think it had something to do with this first track here, which which you may have heard of, Owner of a Lonely Heart, which is basically a Trevor Rabin song that they turned into a Yes song, became a number one single. So here's this prog band that's been around for 14, 15 years, out of nowhere, number one single, huge multi-platinum album. And uh, for a lot of people, and definitely me, this is the first time I ever heard of them. This is what the Atco logo looked like. And before I forget, well, just hold on a second, I'll keep on talking. Um, I do these spur of the moment, off the cuff, um, but I do want to show you something. Shout out to uh, Eric that I work with, who generously parted ways with these. I, I did an episode a long time ago where I went through all the tour books that I'd amassed from seeing bands. Well, um, Eric had a lot of old ticket stubs, and he gave me a couple of things here, including what she had seen, the 9021, the, I almost did it, 90125 World Tour that Yes went on. And this is the tour book. Tour books are really cool. I don't really uh, get into collecting them, save for ones that I've been to. And they, uh, 
A lot of bands don't even put them out anymore. And if you see smaller shows, they probably don't have them. But it was just part of the concert experience, along with getting, um, you know, a shirt or a, a cap or something, some sort of memento that you've seen this tour, and it, it highlights, you know, uh, the companies that they're endorsing at that particular time. So here we go. The evolution continues. Big ad for 90125 in the back, and their previous catalog here. So as you can see, I'm missing quite a few. All in good time. This also came with it, which is interesting. Uh, it comes from Sparklematic Car Sound. And this was sort of an, an addition that came with the US Tour book, I think. I'm, I can only assume. Um, I guess they presented this tour. So there you go. So a couple of uh, mementos from the 9125 era that are not directly music oriented. So back to the, the album itself. This is a copy on cassette that I have. It's a U.S. copy. You can see right there. Serial number. 90125. Simple concept, but it worked. And um, a little bit, but not much inside of it for credits. Leave It and It Can Happen were also singles off of this album. Great tune on here called Changes. More commercial oriented. Uh, Trevor Raven was more of a commercial writer, so they, they became more of a commercial band at this point. But it's good music, really good stuff, and it's one of the easiest CDs to get to get a hold of. Um, found this at Walmart for five bucks. Nine one two five on CD. It's a Canadian issue. There's your serial number again. It's not the first time that a band has used their serial number as the title of the album. It's the only one that I think that I have in my possession. At Co CDs, uh, blue instead of red. It is still Atlantic, so everything else looks the same. And um, basically, there's nothing inside the CD booklet that wasn't inside the record, just credits and lyrics. The next studio album to come up for them was in 1987. Big Generator, same lineup. Uh, a couple of top 40 singles came off of this one. One of my favorite Yes songs, Love Will Find a Way, and another song called Rhythm of Love. So this is a Canadian Columbia House version. They changed the color scheme, I think, depending on country, or maybe there were various issues of this made, as you'll see when I show you the disc. So this is the sleeve that came with it. See, so now this is the serial number for this album, 90255. They didn't use it for the title this time around. Which it makes it interesting when they remaster these CDs and they have to change the, the, the serial number. There's the record itself. And here is the CD version of Big Generator. Again, same pattern, different color scheme altogether. This is a German copy on Atco. They used a sort of a, a digital font inside of here. It's a little hard to read and it looks a little 80s dated by, to, by now, by these standards. So, again, I'm back to missing a few albums now. The next thing to come out, it was in 1989. It wasn't called a Yes album, but it was Anderson, Wakeman, Bruford, and Howe. So, John Anderson, Rick Wakeman, Bill Bruford, Steve Howe, all members of Yes. And Billboard, uh, Joel Whitburn's Billboard chart books considers it a Yes album, so I'll have to pick it up. It's a rule. So basically you had two versions of Yes, and that's the, not the last time that would happen. In 1991, I guess it was more of a business decision than anything, they said, let's put both versions of this group together and uh, do an album, and of course we're going to call it Union. And I only have this on cassette as of right now. This is on Arista Records, and this is a Canadian Columbia House version. And they also went on tour with, I believe, I'll look inside the credits here, but I believe it was eight members altogether. Not really any big singles off of this one. Um, so yeah, we'll show you right here. So featuring all of these members, past and present, of Yes. 
all together. Roger Dean artwork, sort of tie it all together. And uh, various songwriting combinations on here, and of course it didn't last, but they did get a lot of press out of it because it was such a strange notion. I, I'm trying to think of another band that's done that with then multiple members. I mean, you know, Kiss had six members on stage for Unplugged, but that was just for two songs, and that was one night. So the follow-up album, now we're back to the 90125 Big Generator lineup. It came out in 1994, and it was called Talk. Strange logo here done by a guy named Peter Max. And they were signed to Victory Records, which was distrib uh, distributed by Polygram, which went under, out of business shortly after this came out. The only other thing I've seen on Victory is Triumph's Edge of Excess album. This has a great song on it called The Calling. It was a big mainstream rock hit. Um, Walls, uh, I Am Waiting, good songs off here. I think it ended up deleted eventually, so only have this one on cassette thus far. Very colorful artwork here, very bright. So now we're getting into the period where I can't even keep track of the band members coming and going. I'm just going to talk about the music itself. Uh, 1996, they released this album, a two-disc set called Keys to Ascension. There was a sequel to this too, but I've only got the first version. So Keys to Ascension is basically a live album with two new lengthy studio tracks. Roger Dean artwork, of course, and this was released on uh, CMC International, which was distributed by BMG at the time. Slipcase came with a big poster. Which is not something bands were doing a lot in the 90s. It's kind of cool. That's the disc itself. Back cover. I like the artwork on the disc. Um, slightly different artwork on disc 2. A little write-up about this particular lineup uh, reuniting. And um, they sound good. It's good, good live recordings here. Tons of compilations have come out for Yes. I'm not getting all of them, but one came out in 1999. It's got an interesting track listing on it. It's called The Best of Yes, 1970 to 1987. Uh, you've got some album covers ghosted there. Uh, coming out of the clouds. And this is on Electra. And I don't think this came out in North America. It's copyright 1999, WIA International. So it's an interesting uh, mix of songs. For some reason, Roundabout's not on here, which is a little bit of a surprise. But a good primer. They've got box sets. There's all kinds of stuff up there for Yes material to collect all the B-sides and all of the, all of the unreleased tracks, the stray tracks. Lyrics to all the songs. Now, surprisingly enough, you would think that a band like Yes would have worked with an orchestra, you also might be surprised to hear they recorded an album without a keyboard player. In 2001, they did both. They did an album without a keyboard player, just as a four-piece band, with an orchestra. And it's called Magnification. 2001, the copy I have is on Beyond Music. I don't have a lot of stuff on Beyond Music. Uh, what I do have is the Motley Crue reissues. Totally different band. And this was the final Yes album for many, many years. It's all new songs too. It's not. Uh, it's not re-records. So yes, uh, always touring in one configuration or another. But in 2011, they uh, John Anderson left or was asked to leave or was kicked out or whatever version you want to believe, and they brought in a guy named Benoit David, who is Canadian. He's uh, from Montreal, I believe and came from a Yes tribute band. It's, it's happened. That happens. It's, it's, it's a really cool thing when it does happen. Now, side note, um, another band I love, April Wine, their current bass player, Richard Lanthier, Lanthier was also in this same uh, Yes tribute band. I think they were called Close to the Edge. 
Now, he only lasted for this one album, uh, Benoit David. Sounds a lot like John Anderson. Um, I think he sounds more like John Anderson than, than uh, Trevor Horn did, or, their, or his replacement, John Davison. They all have that high, high tenor voice, though. So fly from here. Roger Dean artwork all the way. This is on Frontiers Records, the first release on Frontiers Records. Comes with a documentary DVD. For whatever reason, it won't work for me. All I can get is the menu, but fortunately, the CD itself works. And um, this album is a curiosity as of now, as of this filming. Um, Pledge Music has an album called Fly From Here, Return Flight, which takes out Benoit David's vocals for some reason has replaced them with those of Trevor Horn. The, the kicker here was that Trevor Horn was producing this one. It was the first time he'd worked with that band in a long time. Now, I forgot to mention this too. The odd thing about Trevor Horn is he went from being their singer to producing the 90125 album. So that's not something that happens all the time either. So there is going to be a new version of this, so um, if you haven't gotten this yet and you're a Yes fan, this may become very scarce, this original 2011 issue of it. And to date, the most recent Yes album, studio album, came out in 2014, called Heaven and Earth. Uh, this is John Davison on lead, not Davidson, but Davison on lead vocals. This album was actually produced by Roy Thomas Baker. I don't need, shouldn't need to tell you who he is. Frontiers Records again. Of course, uh, Roger Dean artwork. It's not really heavy. Some of their music's heavy. This one isn't very heavy at all. But if you love, if you like Rush, and you've got a taste for their kind of music, and you're a Dream Theater fan, I would recommend checking out Yes if you haven't. And I could be one of the last, you know, Rush fans to do so. Well, of course, duh. If you like Rush, you probably like Yes. Not necessarily. But anyway, that's my Yes collection to date. I'm going to be adding to it, and i uh, glad to show it off for you. Thanks for watching Tim's Final Confessions.